Hey folks, it's Jang here from UltimateRC.com and RCMania.com, the place for toy-grade RC reviews. This is my look at the Airhogs Battle Tracker set. In contrast to my usual reviews that look at one RC, the Battle Tracker set comes with everything that you see here and the technology to turn it into an entire play experience. First, let's look at the 800 pound gorilla in this picture. This is called the ART, stands for Automated Robotic Turret. It's a standalone unit which has two rotary foam dart launchers on the sides. It has some sensors in the nose and it has a stationary base that does not move. Up top it has a large radar dish and that just acts as a target, something to shoot at. More on that later. Now on the back of the ART unit is a remote control that actually pops right out of it. This is a wired remote control, not wireless, so you have to always stay tethered to it, but it allows you to manually move the thing around and aim it in a direction. Of course the whole purpose of aiming is to fire, so here's an example of shooting. You can fire through all 12 of the projectiles without ever touching the main unit. The other main component of this battle tracker set is this helicopter, the nemesis of the turret. This is a two-channel coaxial helicopter, so it has two main counter-rotating rotors and no tail prop. The helicopter shoots out these foam discs, of which you can load four at a time. The helicopter's controller is pretty traditional, with your throttle on the left, steering on the right, and it also has just a regular fire button up as a right bumper. There's a trim control to make sure that it doesn't spin when you're just trying to go straight. And then this middle thing is a wind-up reel, which holds the cable to the charging jack. The controller does double as a charger for the helicopter, as is the case for many Airhogs RCs. They also give you storage on the back for three spare foam discs. By far the most impressive feature of the Battle Tracker set is something that I haven't mentioned yet. Remember I showed you that the ART turret has a wired controller, but yet in this video right here, you can clearly see the turret moving around and shooting and such, but that wired controller is all the way in its dock. Remember, the A in ART stands for automated. The off and on switch for the turret actually has three positions on it. It has off, of course, but then it has manual mode for a second person to use the wired remote control, and then it has this automated mode. The sensors do a phenomenal job of tracking the helicopter through the air. Even if you do suddenly fly right past it or right over it where it can no longer see the helicopter, it quickly goes into a search mode and reacquires. As for the helicopter, as I said, it's just a two-channel helicopter, so you don't have forward and reverse control, and it also has no gyro in it, so it's always just trying to move forward just a little bit, and you sometimes kind of have to fight it to keep it from turning too far in the direction you want it to go. However, as two-channel helicopters go, this is about as good as they will get. It's pretty stable and smooth flying, and I was able to make a lot of direct hits on the radar dish of the ART. The turret, on the other hand, is not that great at actually hitting the helicopter. Here you can see, just as a test, I just set the helicopter on, but not moving at all. And I just let the turret do its thing. I went through four full loads of ammunition, that's 48 individual shots, and I saw two direct hits on the helicopter out of all of those, and two or three glancing blows off the side. During live flight testing, I also saw the turret score a direct hit right on the helicopter as it flew by once, and only once. It was a good clean hit up close, but it only kind of knocked the helicopter around just slightly for a few seconds. Unfortunately, there's absolutely no way that a human controlling the turret will be able to do better than it does on its own. And that leaves the one-on-one -on -one battle between the helicopter and turret a little bit lacking. With skill and patience as the helicopter pilot, you can make good hits against the turret. As for the turret hitting the helicopter, there, you just saw it. That was it. The one time it ever hit me while flying. Those hits are rare, and they don't even knock the helicopter out of the sky or even anything close, while the helicopter hitting the turret causes the turret to shut down. It's just not a fair fight. The turret also runs out of ammo on its own in literally about one minute, after which it's a sitting duck. The helicopter can fly for about five minutes on a battery charge. In short, the helicopter almost always wins, and the turret is pretty much just a big target that wiggles around and makes noise. There's still a lot of play value here, especially playing with them individually. You can use them independently, and they both shoot physical things, and any kid can easily find a thousand things to have fun shooting at. 
So that about does it for my thoughts on the Airhogs Battle Tracker system. Thanks very much for watching. As always, you can find more RC reviews at rcmania.com, and I hope to see you there. Thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you again soon.